Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on which part of the universe you are. Uh, today we're going to talk about the impact of policy on the economy. And specifically, we're going to look at the impact of monetary policy and fiscal policy. We're going to use our uh, ISLM framework to understand how can uh, the government affect the equilibrium output, interest rate, investment, all that. So in the case of um, fiscal policy, uh, let's, let's simply take a case where the government is pressed by all kinds of constraints to reduce the deficit. Or it could be a situation where, in fact, the, gov the government feels that the economy is overheating and then wants to slow down uh, economic activity. No matter, no matter what the, the, the cause is, there, co there could be a reason for why the government would implement what we call a contractionary, a contractionary fis uh, fiscal policy, which means to reduce uh, uh, um, spending or increasing taxes with the purpose of slowing down uh, economic activity. So once again, let's go back to our ISLM framework and see how we, we can actually visualize the impact of fiscal policy in, uh, on the economy. Since we're talking about um, contractionary fiscal policy, let's take the case where the government chooses to accomplish that by reducing government expenditures. Remember, government expenditures is part of aggregate demand so for goods and services. So it's in the goods market, S which means that our focus, um, our starting point will be the IS curve, which is the uh, condition for equilibrium in the goods market. So here we have a goods market. Uh, shock, the shock is on the goods in the good market. So when the government reduces government expenditures, that means that, that aggregate demand is going to go down. We will see a shift in the ISLM to the left. And that will give us a new equilibrium for both income and interest rate. So income will go down, interest rate will go down. So if government decides to reduce uh, government expenditures, it will be the same if they decide to raise taxes. That will result in lower output, lower interest rate. But then my most more interesting uh, question is, why does the interest rate decline when government reduces uh, expenditures? And why does uh, income go down as uh, as we see on this graph on this diagram so why why does inter in interest rate go down um, remember we we are talking about and if first of all the Government reduces um, expenditures. This reduces aggregate demand. And it's what gives us a lower interest rate and, of course, a lower output. But then the question is, why does interest rate go down? Recall our discussion about portfolio choice. People have the choice in holding their wealth between money and bonds. Now, in this case, how can we use that relationship to understand why government, why interest rate is going down? If government is spending less, that means that the government needs to borrow less, doesn't need to borrow. So that means that the um, supply for bonds, which is the one of the means in which government can borrow, is going to go down. So government needs to borrow less, uh, supply less, the supply of bonds is going to go down, supply goes down, which means that the price of bonds goes up, which implies that interest rate goes
quarter. R remember, we've, we always found, we, we've said that there is always a negative relationship between price of bonds and interest rate. So it's the, it's the decline in government expenditures, meaning less needs for the government to borrow. That means that the price of bonds goes up as the uh, supply goes down. Okay, so that, that's one way in which we can explain one, uh, why government, why interest rate goes down. Now, as interest rates go down, what is going to happen to investment? So, in equilibrium, we see lower income, higher, I mean, lower interest rate, which means that the lower interest rate means that investment is going to go up. But then the high, the lower output means that interest rate investment is going to go down. So what is the net effect? It all depends on whether you believe that investment is sensitive enough to interest rate. So in other words, when, um, when you look at investment by firms, is the constraint m more on the cost of capital in the interest rate or on the availability of funds or demand, which is uh, the, which explains the relationship bet uh, between interest rate, I mean investment and income. If you believe, if you believe that the 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 constraint is on the on the demand side of of investment, so that for example, firms invest mostly to meet the demand for uh, for their for their products, and in which case the in which case income is a key factor in explaining in, uh, investment, then this effect will be large. If you believe that it's the cost of capital that determines investment, then this effect is going to be large. So the net effect will depend on whether it's the income or accelerator effect, as we call, we call it, that is bigger, or the cost of capital that is bigger. So this, you cannot answer this question theoretically. You just have to look at the data, look at the evidence, and see whether a, a decline in government expenditures is accompanied by an investment boom or a decline in investment. Okay? And that's, that's, that's very important because if you are a central bank governor, it all depends on which channel, wi which effect you believe in. If you believe that this is a powerful effect and you are a central bank governor, you're going to use your monetary policy to keep interest rates low to stimulate investment. But if you, if you believe that this is not strong enough, then in fact what you want to, in terms of stimulating uh, investment, is to accelerate economic activity and create incomes. Uh, uh, which is a source of demand for um, firms' output. And then as demand goes up, output, uh, 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 demand for firms' output goes up, then firms are going to invest more. How about uh, monetary policy? Let's take the case where a government concerned by the fact that the economy is not growing or the economy is uh, coming out of a recession uh, wants to stimulate the economy through expansionary monetary policy. This means injecting more uh, cash in the economy or reducing interest rates, whatever it is, to stimulate the economy. Uh, in this case, what is happening if the government, if the, the, the Fed decides to inject more, more, more cash in the economy, that means that money supply goes up, this curve goes up, uh, shifts to, to the right, and we have a lower interest rate and higher output. So increase in money supply led to lower interest rate, higher output. But then I can ask you why? And also why here? Why does interest rate go up, go, go down when uh, money supply goes up? Here again, we're going to look at our portfolio choice. So money supply goes up, 
That means that there is excess cash in people's pockets. So people are going to buy bonds. This will raise the price of bonds. And there you go, meaning interest rate is lower. Whereas for this one, what's happening is that as money supply goes up and interest rate goes down, what is happening, we hope, is that the lower interest rate would, oh, would increase, would cause investment to go up and income to rise. So we have here both an impact on income and an impact on, on e investment. Um, in interest rate, the way we explain the interest rate effect is through the portfolio choice, excess cash in the economy, people get rid of excess cash by buying bonds, means demand for bonds goes up and the price of bonds go up. Here, as the interest rate goes down, we, we are saying, we are, we are assuming that that reduces the cost of capital, firms are going to invest more and that creates more, uh, that leads to higher income. That sums up the impact of an expansionary monetary policy on on the economy, which will lead to higher output, lower interest rate. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, good evening, depending on where you are.